A black South Carolina homeowner cutting her grass was threatened by her white neighbor and his son who shouted racial slurs and yelled that he would murder her. I'm not making this up, folks. You'll only see the story on Roland Martin unfiltered. And luckily for Shirley Ann Montgomery, it was caught on video. And we have that video. Take a look. Shirley Ann Montgomery is joining me from Los Angeles for this Roland Martin unfiltered exclusive. I have so many comments on this. First and foremost, thank you so much for joining us. And I am so sorry you had to go through this. Yeah, me too. So, so the, the, first, the first point I wanted to bring up was one, you're outside cutting the grass. You may have went in a little bit onto his property potentially. Who complains about that? I mean, seriously, who complains about someone stepping on their grass? I mean, I, you know, uh, that's the first thing. And then to for it to escalate to the point where your neighbor's son threatened to murder you, called you racial slurs. I heard monkey being thrown out during that tirade. And, I, and, and so I'm just trying to find out, is this the first time this kind of incident has happened? And then tell me um, a little bit about how it got to the point where we saw the video where the son was coming out and threatening you. Well, um, this is the first time that particular incident happened and, and got to that point. Um, 
I've had amicable relations as far as communicating with the neighbor. Hi, how are you? Times where he was upset with the HOA and he wanted to uh, press charges against the HOA as far as filing a lawsuit and what have you. However, um, we have said hi off and on. And then the neighbor began to stop talking. So I stopped talking and I said that this neighbor was not um, very sane to me in his mindset off and on communication. So I just eliminated all communications. So I was caught off guard by his behavior actually. Mm. And so you said that wasn't the first incident or instance of you guys kind of, I guess, so to speak, butting heads. So when was the point where it got to this point where threats were being made and that's when you made the police report? So I, the only time like we kind of, I don't know if we really butt heads, he was a little bit upset because one of my neighbors, or well, actually a tenant, drove on the grass, which I agreed with him. That should have not occurred. I thought, you know, everything was good to go. That was months prior. I've never interacted with his son. So all of this was very fresh and very new to me. I became very, I guess, aggravated by his actions because he was bamming on his kitchen window at me. When his guy cuts his grass, they go over in my yard. Um, as you can see, the property line is very hard to define. It's kind of defined based on the different colors of the building. So if you could take that and try to walk your way out uh, onto the grass, you can see it's very blurred. Never ever have had any issues of such with any of the other neighbors actually. So I was caught off guard by his behavior. Hmm. I've never talked to his son whatsoever. What was going through your mind that day? And I believe it was on August 6th. What was going through your mind? You're outside, you're cutting your grass, you're just trying to make sure your lawn looks great. And then he comes out and starts making these statements. Kind of walk us through that and what you were thinking and what you were feeling at that moment. So when I was outside initially cutting my grass, I was in a very good space. Actually, I was listening to Kirk Franklin praise. I was singing. I was really thanking the Lord just for my ability. Uh, his son actually came outside and sat at the table with his shades on and he lit a cigar, which he could do that. I don't care. I was pulling weeds at the time and I was determined that I was not uh, going to lose my focus whatsoever. And then I guess after I didn't say anything to the son or pay attention to him, he went back on the inside. And that's when the knocking on the kitchen window started. And my thing was like, what? What do you want? You know, um, leave me alone. Leave me alone, literally. So in my mind, I felt as if I was basically being harassed. And I did not expect for him to come outside. I expected for him to stop knocking. Uh, this camera has been on my properties for quite some time. So it's not like he didn't know he was being videoed. Actually, I used to have the ring say, uh, you are now being recorded. That was an issue for him. So um, being a neighbor, wanting to keep things in good space, I actually turned that part of the camera off, but I've always kept my cameras on. I've never had any issues with any other neighbor. Um, this particular neighbor, in my opinion, my mindset was, okay, you told me before your family came from Germany. You told me before you lived in your mother's home. You asked about taxes. There were certain things he wanted to know that I was not willing to share with him. So his mindset, even in saying, which a lot of people throw that weight out there, he knew the sheriff, which I really didn't care, but uh, it was kind of like a white privilege thing to me. He had an issue because I had a nice sidewalk, which the previous owners had done. He had an issue because I have a garage with um, an apartment on top where you see those stairs. Um, and that's where the camera is actually coming from, which is on my property. So uh, I'm not sure where all this came from. It definitely uh, aggravated my anxiety. Um, I'm, I'm a former veteran. Um, served in the army. Um, my son was assaulted by uh, the police. So um, not first encounterment as far as hostility or, or um, issues based on race. And I do say it was racial. I uh, actually um, 
went to the Defense Equal Opportunity Management Institute, Naomi, in Florida. So I, I understand what the system says, white privilege is, or how different people think. Um, and I'm not saying that all people are bad people, but in this particular case, this neighbor has an issue. And um, I became afraid, just going to be honest, uh, in real talk. Uh, I, I am a concealed weapon carrier. I've never really carried my weapon on me, but now I kind of do, wanting to make myself comfortable with carrying it. Um, I, when I get back to South Carolina, I'm actually talking with my counselor, possibly of getting um, a, uh, a dog that I can have with me, um, one, as protection, but then two, to also help calm some of my anxiety. Because I don't know. I mean, you can see where we live, right next door to each other. You can see this guy, he burst out and started yelling at me and calling me out of my name. I, I don't really know um, what his mindset is and what he will or will not do. Well, I can absolutely <laughs> understand the fear of that because, again, you're just cutting your grass and you have someone running at you talking about they're going to murder you. Yeah, yeah. And then he turned around and he said to me that he didn't excuse the expression, give a shit. And so, bam, shit. Silence hidden in trauma. I guess he got a whole lot of trauma going on. Huh. Uh, he didn't care. And after I got the police report, I learned that the officer, as far as I was concerned, was very biased. And he also was in the defense of um, the neighbor and his son based on me not responding intimidated by this particular neighbor and what he said. Now we have the police report right here and there's actually a line from the police report that I would like to read for our viewers. Um, we, do, we don't want to show it to protect our um, interviewees privacy. Um, but basically in the uh, police report it states that quote due to the lack of ability on the part of the subject to carry out his threat no further action was taken. <laughs> so yeah. this individual can come outside, threaten to murder you, call you racial slurs, and because he didn't act upon it, we're not, we're not going to take any further action. How did you feel about that when you filed this report and the police were like, yeah, we're not going to do anything because he didn't do anything to you? So when the officer showed up, he told me that he had to talk to the neighbor as well, which I understood that. I understood protocol. Then um, he also, another officer approached and began to talk to him. That officer did not talk to me. Um, that officer did not say to me, hey, calm down, it's okay, it's a misunderstanding or any of that. So when I went to pick up the police report that following Monday, because I'm real serious about a restraining order, I don't know who they are, I don't know the mindset, I was caught off guard. Um, and I saw the way he wrote that report, I was livid. I literally burst in tears. Um, I literally felt that um, even though this guy threw things out there, that what he said, there may be some truth to that as far as who he knew. Um, the other officer, he did not talk to me whatsoever. And I'm, I'm, I've got some concerns. Um, I really, really do. Um, I have a, I'm walking truthfully in faith because I have a lot of faith. Uh, but I'm not, I know that God is not causing us to be stupid either. I know for a fact that I'm protected um, because I truly, I truly believe that I'm protected because had not there been interference by his father, I really believe that that guy would have come and caused me some harm. And I shared that also with the police. And um, I spoke with a captain or whoever after the fact, and they're like, oh yeah, 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 we understand. Just keep your cameras, blah, blah, blah. Um, but. I have concerns. <laughs> well, thankfully, you had that camera footage because we also have the footage of the neighbor saying that it's illegal for you to record him. Yeah. But then you have the police sweet. saying, no, keep recording him. So you, you have any conflicting things going on. Had you not had that video, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So thankfully, probably, you had that as evidence. Yeah, pro probably not. Um, and, and again, um, the officers, because I was actually at the magistrate, office when this guy went and stood in front of the, the uh, property line and started talking to my camera. And I immediately asked officers uh, if what I was doing was illegal. And they told me absolutely not. All he was trying to do was to intimidate me. And he's not going to intimidate me. I'm not moving. Mm. Let's bring in our panelists because I'm sure they have plenty of questions to ask. Let's start off with Terrain. you have any questions for Miss um, Shirley Ann? 
Miss Shirley Ann, um, first of all, I want to say um, I'm very sorry that you had to deal with that, and I'm very sorry that you had to deal with the anxiety of a t an attack like that. Um, yeah, I got some questions. I got some things I want to say, but I'm not going to say them right now. But so I'll just ask you straight up: um, How? What's the situation now? Have you have you had any other run-ins with this individual? These two individuals have there's been any kind of contact between you all? Um, so after the first incident. Um, the second thing was, was when he came out and he, to me, took this position of or posture of attention. Again, I've been in the military or this posture of intimidation. And he says to me, um, um, you are illegally recording me and I am going to have a warrant put out for your arrest because you are trespassing on my property and you can't record me and my attorney will send you a letter. Thank you very much. And then he walks off with this militant or whatever posture. Um, so it's kind of been like church mice, quiet. Um, I have friends that are Caucasian who have who cut my yard. And so they said to me, when they get back, don't worry, we're going to cut your grass. We've cut it before. Nothing was ever said. So we're going to see what happens now. And it's, it's interesting that he has a African-American male who cuts his grass, who I wanted to serve allowed him to cut my grass. First time he did a good job. The second time he botched up my grass, but I didn't say anything to him. I saw it on the camera and it allowed me to believe that he was in cahoots with the neighbor because he never came back to me and said, ma'am, do you want me to continue to cut your grass or, or no interactions whatsoever? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I took a, got on the plane, yay, to come support my son in uh, his film festival release of the short film, A War on Friendly Grounds, uh, King Jacqueline Martin, which of course the same Sheriff's Department, Richland County Sheriff's Department, Columbia, South Carolina, were the ones who came to my um, assistance to take the report. And I was very shocked to learn that this officer actually closed the report because I told him that I wanted to put a restraining on her. And I was like to this captain who sounded like me, okay, so what's the protocol? Nobody never called uh, to, to reach out to me. I filed an internal affairs. I still have not heard from them. I don't know what's in my mail when I'll get back, but yeah, I think if they just kind of brushed it over like it was nothing. But it is something for me. It is definitely, in a, it's in my mind. When somebody says to somebody that they're gonna murder, murder you, I, I don't take that lightly. People lose their lives off of road rage, you know? I don't take it lightly. I'm a little bit on edge uh, from my family, from my children. I'm I'm walking the course. I have neighbors across from me, but yeah, I'm concerned because I don't know when they'll come out or when they won't. I do plan to install another camera on the other side of the building, and um, I'm just gonna make sure I stay in tune with myself. Torrain, did, Shirley, you, did you say that you were licensed? Yes, I do. Ms. Shirley, did you say that you were licensed? I am licensed to carry. And, and the strange thing uh, is, um, you know, I was not carrying um, because I know it's the person behind the gun and not necessarily the gun itself. But um, I went on a walk. I carried uh, just to, I'm working at making myself feel comfortable with uh, with this carrying uh, process. So I have a neighbor who also um teaches the, the classes. So him and I are going to go back to the range and we are right. going to um, do some target practice. Um, yeah. And as okay, a veteran, you that. should be able to get that um, either discounted or for free. Don't ask me how I know that, but you should be able to get that for free. So uh, make sure you ask about that when you go to the range. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, Erica. Um, so first and foremost, um, I hope and pray that you feel safe where you are. That's the first thing that came up for me. And um, as everyone on the panel, you know, really, um, our heart goes out to you for this position that you have to be in. And as a veteran myself, um, I salute you and thank you for your thank service. You. Um, that this is definitely me. not something. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. And um, I honor you and how you're standing in your faith, you know, one foot in the kingdom, but one foot um, in the natural understanding, the balance of both of those things. Um, I have some familiarity with Columbia, South Carolina, and um, can say to you that um, what you experience with regard to law enforcement is of no surprise. Um, 
they are lackadaisical um, from A to Z. Um, however, one of the things that I did hear you say was that homeowners association for where you live. So I'm wondering um, how you have navigated communicating um, a severe threat. You know, what we would say in the military would be a threat con delta. So I would consider this a threat con delta, especially with someone not only verbally attacking you, um, but to also issue a real threat. Uh, how has the homeowners association, if you communicated this with them, been able to help to navigate um, maybe even removing, I'm not sure if he's leasing or if he's paying a mortgage there, but um, have they been of help with um, this hostile neighbor that you have that has issued a real threat to you and to your life? So I actually shared the video. Um, she was actually taken by surprise and um, she shared that she would take it to their legal team. Like I said, maybe a week or so after I left and I came to, um, to LA, I think that following weekend, I actually uh, flew out here or it might've been a week. Just kind of tried to keep myself busy. Um, still waiting to also hear back from them. The neighbors are aware. I didn't realize how, how it really impacted me until the mm. same day. Was it the same day? It was the same day. I was at the pool walking because I went to go to the association, not realizing that they were closed because it was a Saturday and it was like my mind just racing. And I, um, but one of the neighbors, white female, she stopped and she talked to me and she said, I heard a whole lot of noise, but I didn't know what was going on. So I shared it with her. And there was this Caucasian male that was across the street and he stopped and he said, hey, I have no idea where this guy was, but he said, hey, are you okay? And I literally just burst in tears. One, for a couple of yeah. reasons. One, because I didn't realize how traumatic that experience was for me because, you know, we're all tough, hua hua, whatever. And yeah. the other part was that that man looked like the man who threatened me and he, he cared enough to inquire um, about me. So I had kind of mixed emotions going on with me um, at that time. When I get back, I do plan to do um, a follow-up. Uh, this neighbor told me some time ago that he was going to put a fence up. I'm waiting on him. I wish he would put a fence up. Um, on the long side of um, my property uh, that you cannot see uh, is some vegetation like fruit or whatever. And I was, I said to him when he told me about putting up the fruit, um, uh, excuse me, the fence, I said to him that I wanted to plant, you know, some herbs or whatever. And he's like, well, you're not going to be able to get to it. Well, there's a meter over there. I'm smart enough to know that Dominion, uh, which is a um, uh, electricity gas company has to have access to that meter. But I was a little bit taken back because he said no, but I didn't give him any reaction to his comment. Uh, as far as saying to me, no, he would not allow anything or whatever. I was like, whatever, got it, next. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it's your property. Do whatever the heck you want to do with it. If your property doesn't allow certain things, what I do know is that they have to access that meter. Put your fence up. In the end, it was like, that means I don't have to look at you. I don't care. You know, and that's my kind of my attitude. And what I, what I, what I have found growing up in America is when we take that type of attitude – it is the individuals who are uncomfortable in who they are that attempt to oppress and or intimidate someone else to change their mindset. Uh, Reese, I'm going to get to you in one second um, and let you ask your question. But I wanted to ask um, Shirley Ann, um, just as far as uh, something that you stated, you said you saw an individual who looked like the man. And even though it wasn't him, you ended up bursting out and, you know, bursting into tears and crying. I'm almost wondering if this uh, incident almost caused a sort of PTSD, so to speak. And oh, it was. Go on. You, you don't have to wonder. I'll tell you right off the bat, it, it was. One, because I didn't think it would happen to me. Um, it happened to my son. And so I went through that experience uh, with my son, King Jaquel. Even when I went to the uh, film festival this past weekend to watch War on Friendly Ground, it was very, 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 very real to me. Um, to rewatch that movie was like living it all over again. Mm. So, yeah. Well, as someone who's gone through trauma, um, being attacked and who is a, a 
big proponent for going to counseling. Um, I would suggest um, seeking out that only for several reasons. One, for your own mental health to help you, but as well as you'll have record that this incident you know, that this incident caused you to potentially have this sort of distress. So that way, when you do take it further with the police or if you decide to take this to court, you will have record of how this incident impacted you, um, something you never should have had to go through at all. Um, and if you have a local vet center, I used to be in Columbia, South Carolina. There's the Columbia Vet Center that you can go to and they will see you. You don't ha even have to give them all your information. You just show up and say, hey, I need to talk to someone and they'll definitely help you. So I just wanted to offer that um, information. Um, on that note though, uh, Reese, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, first of all, Ms. Montgomery, I'm sorry that you had to experience this. Um, I have to say, I do like your style. I liked your energy in that video. A lot of times we do, you know, put on the veneer of strength. And even though we're terrified on the inside, but I do appreciate how you conducted yourself by not backing down. Uh, one comment is, um, I would suggest maybe not you, because I understand how distressing this is, but maybe an ally, maybe a neighbor, um, checking their social media and seeing if they're saying anything about this to help use against them at some point. If it's a civil suit or uh, restraining order, you know, a lot of times these folks like to tell on themselves. I would I would make that recommendation. And then the other, the question I have for you is, um, since you aren't getting uh, a lot of cooperation out of the police department, is there somebody in city government that you can reach out to, um, you know, to kind of enlist to help you uh, with getting more responses out of the police department? So I did speak with um, my counselor. I'm big on counseling. I believe it, it helps us. Um, and so what she recommended was that I reach out to Sheriff Leon Lott, send him the video. He may or may not be aware of what was going on. And um, I mean, it's, it'll be interesting to see how they'll respond because they will learn that I am the mother of the officer from that same department who assaulted my son. So that's gonna be kind of interesting. And I had a conversation with Leon Lott, um, had it on recording, I don't know where it is, when my son's incident happened in 05. And what I understood was uh, what I said to him was very professionally is that officers are indicative of their leaders. Of course, that comes from my military background. Your, your soldier is indicative of how you lead them. And he probably took that offensive. And mm. it, for me, it was like a threat, like um, don't call the police department, don't come to the police department, internal affairs has it. And I felt uh, that if I would have went to that police department, he probably would have arrested me for some petty charge of, of harassing the police or whatever. So I kind of backed away a little bit, but the message was very clear. So we'll see how he will respond to me um, as far as I do. I promise you, when you all read, did the clip and then my address was there, I was like kind of cringed a little bit. But um my, my whole piece is, one, I know that God has me, and two, I just believe it'll work out for my good, and three, um, if this guy is not a part of the process of the end, and of course I know we can speed things up with life, then he can't touch me. Right. And, and it's, also, it's a spiritual warfare from that, from that angle for me, uh, literally. Shirley Ann, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today. I, I would hope that you would keep in touch with us and as uh, this story keeps developing and keep us updated on how it goes. But again, I'm so sorry that you had to go through this, even just as a woman in South Carolina, but also as a veteran having to yeah. go through this. You should yeah. not have to endure any of this. Um, and so I'm so sorry for that, but thank you for sharing your story. And I hope that you're able to get some justice and hopefully maybe their ears will perk up and they'll actually start listening now that you're you're being outspoken about this. So thank you so much for joining yeah. us. All right, folks, back to that whole unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being 
and the voice of Black America rolling. Stay black. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?